a go-home show with some good and some meh. I'm Charles Rithlin with my review of WWE NXT, and yep, it's a go-home show for TakeOver 31. I'm going to have my predictions for that show right after the review. It wasn't a bad show. It actually had more good than bad, but I'm not going to lie to you. There were some points where I was like, okay, this show's a bit too long. Sometimes NXT is great for two hours. Other times you're like thinking, boy, it should be back at the one-hour format or just 90 minutes. Because sometimes they just have some matches that just are there just to fill time. Not even that they're the worst things in the world, but anyway, let me know what you thought of this show and how you think TakeOver 31 is going to be in the comments. So, Shotzi Blackheart versus Dakota Kai, all because Shotzi eliminated Dakota Kai from the Women's Battle Royal, and Raquel in all red. Sweet Christ, that was an attention grabber right there. Good match with some good strikes and a nice backbreaker by Dakota. I do have one, uh, one commentary line, though, targeting the pelvic area of Dakota. Bit weird, but okay. I'm not sure who said that. Uh, that was a bit odd, though. I got one question. Also, why in the world did Shotzi insist on almost dying on this show, doing that freaking, you know, spot where she landed on her neck and head on the apron? That was fucking painful. She somehow survived that, tougher than I could ever be. And then, you know, Raquel grabs and trips her up, and then Rhea just fisting and steamrolling, um, you know, Raquel from behind. And then, despite all that, despite the apron spot and all the strikes, most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling, surprise roll-up, one, two, three, Shotzi gets a victory. Rhea versus uh, Raquel Gonzalez would be pretty fun. And then we get uh, Escobar and Swerve uh, doing a split-screen interview piece about their Cruiserweight Championship match to take over 31. I like Swerve. Escobar, I'm still not sold on. It's not that he's not good. I'm more sold on Swerve, probably because maybe I'm a little biased because I met him multiple times and saw him at indie shows. Um, I don't know why Swerve is in a panic room. Escobar refers to Swerve as a parasite, says the match will be fair. Swerve says he'll believe it when he sees it because, you know, like uh, I call him Lego Del Phantasm because I like that better. And they either interfere or there's a load of mask. And then Escobar talks about, you know, bringing respect to the Cruiserweight Championship. And cool, okay, whatever, you know, it was what it was. I don't know who this person is that's coming back home to NXT. Some people said Bo Dallas, some people said Ember Moon. Who do you think it's going to be? Let me know in the comments. It was Bo Dallas, I mean, I like Bo Dallas as far as, like, stuff he did in NXT, and I think that he got a, a raw deal on the main roster, but I'm not really going to care if he goes back to NXT. I, I mean, I don't know. Let me know who you think is going to be in the comments, though. Kyle O'Reilly video package, um, you know, talking about him trained to face Finn Balor, not being able to catch Finn Balor, wanting to get this one-on-one -on -one shot, Ring of Honor footage, training, Adam Cole and various other people talking about all the shit that he did to get to this point. And Kyle O'Reilly, tremendous video package here, really good stuff. He ain't going to beat uh, Finn Balor, but it's really good stuff. Um, and then they announced that Tegan Knox has suffered a third torn ACL. I'm going to make it really quick. Tegan Knox needs to hang it up. It's like Chris Saban with the multiple knee injuries he had, like back-to-back -back ACL injuries. That's exactly what her injuries reminded me of. And now a third torn ACL. She ain't even 30. She ain't even close to 30 yet. I think she's like 25, 25, 26. Hang it up. I want her to be able to live, her, live a full life, have fun, and do everything. And there's nothing wrong with her wanting to continue to wrestle, but just her body's telling her she's fucking done. She can coach. She can manage. She can do stuff like that. If, her, if she can somehow come back from this, good for her, but she's on borrowed time. The human body can only put up with so much shit. Do you think Tegan should retire? Let me know in the comments. Um, and then Sarah interviews uh, Candace and Gargano. Well, Johnny Gargano. I don't like them on television as a couple. Not that, that they shouldn't like you know be allowed to be a couple on television. They just should be interesting, and they aren't. Um, Johnny says, well, she broke our TV. You broke her ACL. It's a fair trade. And whatever, all this stuff. Sarah looking fucking incredible as an interviewer. Um, and then Cameron talks about the Gauntlet Eliminator and then says he's going to cheer himself up with the Cameron Grimes Invitational Stepping Stone to the Moon match. He has hand-picked opponents like Joey Pistachio, a little 85-pound guy. He immediately hits a cave in, one, two, three. Joey Strong's the next guy who gets tossed out. Ridge Holland is like, huh, I'm bored by this. I'm going to come beat your ass. And he beat his ass. They had a match. He clubbed him, kicked him while they were in the ropes or while Grimes was in the rope, and got DQ'd and kept kicking the shit out of him. Okay, I did like Cameron Grimes' running commentary, that was fine. And then we get uh, Austin Theory talking about O'Reilly's inspirational story, and, you know, how, oh, he was 22 at WrestleMania. You know, one of the matches that shouldn't have fucking happened, because Austin Theory's good in the ring, he is. And whether this stuff about him is or isn't true, and I'm inclined to believe at least some of it's true, because 
he's limiting interaction on his tweets and he's kind of being, you know, a bit of a scuzz bucket. Let's just say it isn't true. He's still very bland once you have him talk. So, yeah, but I'll just call him Austin Theory just for, you know, just for fun, just for shits and giggles. But yeah, um, he mocks O'Reilly's inspirational story because, he's like, it took him 15 years. That's, um, that's longer, that's, you know, lo that's longer than, almost as long as I've been alive, basically, is what he was saying. And then Kushida talks about coming to the U.S., settling his family in, how he'll destroy Velveteen. He's the new Kushida, which we see destroy Tony Nese soon afterwards. And then Velveteen, Velveteen Dream, 15 Dream, if you will. Um, talking about his, you know, talking about the spotlight being too bright for Kushida, and he'll see him on Sunday. I'm surprised that Velveteen will be there at TakeOver 31, because that is way over the age limit that he goes for. And then Grimes wants to see Regal, but he sees Dexter Loomis and says, you're a freak, and walks off. Adam Cole then talks about the accolades of the Undisputed Era, and we're the same Undisputed Era. He calls out there, he says, you can either get in this ring and kick your ass, or you can be there, you can stay there, and we'll all beat your ass. And then Theory gets in the ring, and that is so Theory was a line that was actually said during this broadcast. Gretchen, stop trying to make Fetch happen. It isn't going to happen. Um, it was fine. I enjoyed Cole beating the shit out of Austin Theory. That was nice. Theory did hit a nice, you know, springboard dropkick with some good uh, action. Did a nice blue thunderbomb. But, man, that roll, when he got hit with that super kick, that was incredible. Last shot, one, two, three. Cole beating Austin Theory. This is good stuff. And then we get Damien and Eo promo, just they're the rock stars. We're going to face off against uh, Candice and Gargano. You know, those the, that couple that nobody fucking cares about in the main event, uh, champions versus challengers. And then we get Caden with Casey versus Zia Lee. Zia Lee was more vicious. She doesn't like losing. And she's been getting a little bit angrier. And then an awkward roll-up uh, wins it for Caden soon afterwards. I will say this, though. Somebody said that uh, Casey and Caden should be a tag team or whatever. And that's true. But they need to come up with a fancy nickname and a chant with a nice cadence to it. You can already hear people just shutting the goddamn thing off. Anyway, um, yeah, Zaya was upset. Just said, no, no, leave me alone. Leave me alone, Dad. Leave me alone. You don't understand me. No. Um, she just was, she was just upset. Probably going to turn heel. I would just turn her more vicious. I wouldn't even turn her heel. And then Shawn, uh, Shawn Michaels hosts a sit-down with O'Reilly and uh, Balor, which is nice because he can keep one eye on each man. Um, that's that's so mean. But Shawn Michaels kind of fucking deserved that, honestly. So, anyway, um, you know, it's how big the match will be. Will O'Reilly show up by himself? Will there be issues if O'Reilly wins? It's a life-altering main event. Some really, really good stuff. Balor putting over uh, O'Reilly saying you're good and you would win this championship if any other man held it, but I'm holding it. They almost sold me on it, but O'Reilly ain't winning. And then we get Gargano and Candice versus Priest and Io Shirai, Challengers versus Champions. Well, uh, the the champs run in the ring while Io's lights are still going off, the flickering lights. You know, the stuff where anybody with epilepsy issues would really be having problems. I feel bad for anybody that does. Um, eh, match is just kind of rushed. It was. It was like it, it, a moonsault to Gargano, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then... The priest goes for the reckoning, low blow from Candace while the referee is distracted, and then one final beat, pinned priest, and the heels celebrate with the championships like they're going to win. They're not going to win Sunday. So, not a bad episode of NXT, but now let me talk about the TakeOver 31 card. This will probably take me maybe two minutes at the most. Escobar versus Swerve Cruiserweight Championship. They've done this really well as far as like hyping it, where like maybe Swerve can, be, maybe Swerve just can't beat him. Maybe he can. He has been the only man to pin Escobar, and that was before um, Escobar became champion. That was during the uh, little round robin tournament that they did, which was a good idea. And if Swerve doesn't win here, then I don't know what the fuck you do. Unless you do some other kind of disputed finish, I almost think Swerve has to win. That's why I think Escobar is going to win. I think Escobar, Escobar is going to win. Swerve would be a great champion. <clears throat> do not get me wrong. I'd love to see Swerve win. I think they're going to keep it on Escobar for a bit. I just, I don't think he's had it long enough. He's only had it for a couple months. I really think they're going to keep it on him. Sword may eventually win it, but he ain't winning here. And then we get Kushida versus Velveteen Dream. Kushida should beat him in five minutes. Honestly, though, Kushida should win. Velveteen has no business winning. He has not really turned in a good takeover performance in a while. That match with Adam Cole was proof of that. That parking lot brawl, whatever it was. Kushida needs to win. And it... Eight minutes tough. He needs to destroy Velveteen. He honestly needs to. 
And then we get Damian Priest versus Johnny Gargano, North American Championship. Priest just won it recently. He does not need to lose it to Gargano. They push this whole thing of Gargano and Candice holding championships at the same time, being a couple doing that. No, don't fucking do that. Have Priest win. Have him hold the championship. Have him get a win over a big uh, star like Gargano. Even though at this point, Gargano, Ciampa, and a few others staying in NXT this long, well, I get it. They need stars. You need to move some parts around. At, at some, some point, Gargano being in NXT had, will overstay its welcome, and that was about a year ago. Like, Priest is going to win. Gargano needs to move on. Shirai versus Larray. This is the one that I'm a little bit worried about. Now, they had a great match at TakeOver la you know, in August of last year. It was a really good match, and I hope it equals this. Or it, it, this equals that. I fear, though, that they're going to try to switch the title just to fuck with everybody. LeRae has no business winning the championship. She's good until she opens her goddamn mouth. She's just not an interesting promo. She's not. But if they can craft a match, excuse me, about 80% as good as that one, then I'm sold on it. But Shirai needs to walk away with the belt here. I worry they're going to switch the title here, but I'm going to go with Shirai. And then uh, we have Balor versus O'Reilly, NXT Championship. 25 minutes, gives us 20, 25 minutes. Balor's winning. O'Reilly will not win. That does not mean that O'Reilly will not get another shot, and O'Reilly maybe can't get another shot at some point. Balor ain't losing a championship here. Unless they're going to just move Balor right back on up to being, you know, on Raw or SmackDown because they want star power on, those, on either of those brands. Nope, they're going to keep him in NXT, and him being O'Reilly would be a good call, but they wrote themselves into a corner because then where do you go with O'Reilly from here? But Balor's going to win. I don't have any championships changing hands, even though I want Swerve to win. I don't think it's going to happen. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Retlin. I'll see you soon.